Okay. Now, in this lecture, in just five to seven minutes, we will revise everything regarding the basic structures of the eyeball and the different pores and different layers of the eyeball. As you know that the first layer of our eyeball is the fibrous sphere, right? The fibrous sphere and the, uh, the the structures in the fibrous layers are cornea and sclera, right? No, the first transparent structure here, the anterior most, which is one sixth of the eyeball, is called cornea, right? And the sclera is this, the blackish one. If you if you can zoom here, this blackish portion is called sclera, sclera, and this sclera is actually the protective layer, which protect all the ingredients, which protect all the composition of the eyeball between it, right? Now these two layers is called the fibrous layer, this cornea, and this sclera, the, which I pointing to in the black marker, this is called protective layer of the eyeball or fibrous layer of the eyeball, right? Cornea has the 43 diopters of the total power of the eye, right? And now, to move further, we have the second layer of the eyeball, which is called the uveal tract or the nutritive layer or the vascular layer. So, almost all the vascularity of the eyeball is in the Uveal tract or vascular layer of the eyeball, which is second pole of the eyeball, right? So we have different structures in this uveal tract, and these are iris. First one, if we coming from anterior to posterior surface, the iris, the ciliary body, and the pore. Right? If we and if we can come here, this one, this movable diaphragm, which can move and constrict as well, these movable diaphragm is called iris. This one and this one. These two, which I pointing to the Red marker is called iris, and move posterior. This triangular structure is called ciliary body, and the point here, which is in the red marker, this is called choroid bedding. This is bedding of the choroid, and this choroid is actually helpful for the nutrition of the retinal pigmented epithelium. So the the nutrition, the selective nutrition, is going towards the retinal pigmented epithelium. Right? This in the blue color, this is called the first layer of the retina, which is called retinal pigmented epithelium. Right? Now, if we coming from uh, now, we have talked about the different structures of the uveal tract. We have discussed about iris, we have, we have discussed about the ciliary body, and we have discussed about the choroid. Right? Now, as we said that this is a movable diaphragm, this iris is movable diaphragm, it can move. It has this different muscles, dilator pupillae and constrictor pupillae. We will discuss about these uh, muscles that we will study the detailed nature about the eyes. Now, this is frontal view of the eyeball and this is called iris. This is the colorful structure as I have discussed. This is colorful structure of the eyeball which we can see the naked eye and in the surrounding of these, this is a blank over here which can dilate, which can increase its size, if we can zoom here, it can increase its size or it can decrease its size. Uh, it means this hole, this aperture, this hole can increase its size, it can dilate itself or it can constrict itself. This is called pupil. This aperture is called pupil. Pupil is actually a space between the muscles of the iris, between the circular muscles of the iris and uh, dilator pupillae and constrictor pupillae. So, with the help of these muscles of the iris, the pupil, the aperture can dilate, it can expand or it can constrict as well. So, this expandable and constrictable structure of the eyeball is called, this aperture is called the pupil. Pupil will decide that how much light will penetrate in the eyeball. If the pupil is, is thus in smaller size, is constricted form, the smaller amount of the light will penetrate. And if the pupil is the larger in size, so the excess amount of the light can penetrate in the eyeball, right? So the people can decide, or you can say the muscles of the eyes can decide that how much of the light can penetrate in the eyeball, right? Now, we have discussed the second layer, the uveal tract. Now, we will discuss about the sensory layer of the retina, which is the most sensitive layer of the eyeball, which is the most beautiful layer of the eyeball. So, the sensory layer, the sensory layer which is the retina, retina has different photoreceptor cells like rods and cones. As we have discussed, the roads are the are very helpful in the dim light, right? The roads are useful in the dim light. If you are moving, if you are wandering around in the darker street, right? If you are wandering around the darker street, and if you can see a little bit uh, clearer, the 
the things that quarter chapter which are responsible for that in the dim light are gods and the bones are helpful these are quarter chapter the bones are the quarter chapter cells which are actually helpful in the daylight which can uh, with the help of these bones we can differentiate the colors the different colors right now these rods and cones are actually they have a, a major function that these two photoreceptor cells can convert the electromagnetic light into the action potential right the current and this current and these if the light goes here we can if we can draw the phenomena here if the light if you zoom here if the light is going through the cornea is passing through the cornea and then and it will pass through the pupil and will hit the crystalline lens and after gaining the power after gaining the effective power it will hit this the sensory layer of the retina the sensory layer of the retina and the rods and bones over here all of these is retina these the, the green marker is the photo neurosensory retina and the bluish marker is like the uh, retinal pigment epithelium so the neurosensory retina have the photoreceptor cells and these photoreceptor cells have the ability to convert this electromagnetic light into the action potential and these all action potential from all of the retina is going towards the optic nerve this is optic nerve and this is the source this is the wire this is the connection which keep which carry all the action potential or all the current towards the central nervous system towards the visual cortex and visual cortex is ironically make the image of the light the light which is passing through the different structures of the eyeball and it's converting the light into the action potential and this action potential will carry by through the optic nerve and optic nerve, optic nerve will carry these action potential towards the uh, you can say the central nervous system and the central nervous system and the visual cortex of the central nervous system is convert the light into the image so we can see all the images clearly right now all the light which convert in the action potential by or through the photoreceptor cells the rods and cones and all these action potential will go in the optic nerve like this right so all these light will convert into action potential by the rods and cones and all these action potential will go in the optic nerve and optic nerve will carry these all these action potential towards the visual cortex right now i think we have discussed all the three layers very introductionally and now we will discuss a little bit things about the segments and chambers of the eyeball remember that there are three different chambers of the eyeball the first chamber of the eyeball is from the cornea and you can zoom here from the cornea to the iris right from the cornea to the iris is called the anterior chamber i named it anterior chamber again i'm telling you the space between the posterior of the cornea towards the anterior of the iris is called anterior chamber right now we will discuss about the next chamber of the eye which is the posterior chamber and this is called from the posterior surface of the iris towards the till the anterior surface of the lens so the space between the iris and the lens this space is called the posterior chamber right now we are discussing about next thing the last chamber of the eyeball the chamber between the posterior surface of the lens and toward the retina the space between the retina and the posterior surface of the crystalline lens is called the vitreous chamber so we have three different chambers anterior chamber posterior chamber and vitreous chamber the anterior chamber is from cornea to iris is anterior chamber from called iris to lens this is posterior chamber from lens posterior and from the retina anterior is called the vitreous chamber because posterior to the lens and anterior to the retina we have a gel like structure over here and this gel like structure is called the vitreous chamber sorry the vitreous humor right and we have another liquid we have discussed it in the last lecture that we have a liquid form of here 
in the anterior and the posterior chamber we can say our anterior chamber of the eye and our posterior chamber of the eye is filled with the liquid which is called aqueous humor but the difference between the aqueous humor which is filled by the anterior and the posterior chambers is different with the vitreous humor which is a gel like structure this vitreous humor is a gel like structure and this aqueous humor which is filled with the anterior and the posterior chamber is a liquid is aqua that's why it is called aqueous humor now we have three different chambers and we have two different segments of the eye ball now i'm talking about the segments of the eye ball no now now the segments the anterior segment and posterior segment the anterior segment is from the posterior of the cornea towards the anterior of the crystalline lens the space between here and here these all space is called anterior chamber i can say that aqueous humor is filled with the anterior segment the anterior segment is the space between the lens and the cornea right now we will talk about the posterior segment right posterior segment is from the posterior of the lens and from the anterior of the retina right the space over here this all space the space which is occupied by the vitreous humor the gel like structure is actually called the posterior segment right all right we have discussed uh, i think we have discussed very briefly all the uh, different structures and all the different pores of the eye ball inshallah in the next lecture we will discuss about the embryology of the eye and we will touch refraction distancing and orthopics as well